to drop the float and get in the water and take a look for snorkeling. And if we need to, then we have to dive on it. Most everything I heard is from secondhand, from or from Lindsay. How they went down, they went down to that wreck, looked down there for the fish, and Lindsay's one who found it and actually and caught it with the net. And then they actually killed it on the surface. So it wasn't like it was really fast running around, but they were able to net it. You want me to spin the boat around? Let's figure out where the wind's gonna blow us first. Well, I think it's gonna blow us with the way we're going now. Is it? That's, yeah. My name's Lindsay Jones. Uh, I am a Student Conservation Association intern, and I'm the lionfish intern. They created the position, mostly Biscayne National Park, because lionfish, which are invasive, are becoming um, a big problem. Well, they're a big problem in the Caribbean, and they started seeing more and more of them along the Florida coast. <laughs> Lionfish are very popular marine aquarium fish. Uh, when they're young, when they're small, they're very ornate and beautiful, and uh, people can train their lionfish to actually be hand-fed. Well, I had my first lionfish in 1986. I bought it for, if I remember correctly, $59 in a pet shop in Galveston, Texas, and kept it in an aquarium for well, about a year and a half. And it ate a number of its tank mates over the years. We were actually pretty surprised at the size of the tank mates it could eat. And I eventually gave it to somebody else. And they're pretty indiscriminate in what they feed on. Mostly fish, but also crabs and, and shrimp and other crustaceans. Uh, we've documented over 40 different species of prey fish from lionfish stomachs, uh, including some commercially valuable species like grouper and snapper. So they have the potential to do a lot of damage to our native ecosystem. Our native fish have not evolved with lionfish, and they haven't evolved an avoidance to predation by lionfish. And lionfish have few, if any, predators in this ocean. There's the little nephil spider. Spider of the golden web, they call it. The lionfish that I saw were uh, off the coast of Indonesia, near the island of Sulawesi, in fact, near the town of Manado. How could a fish from the Pacific that's tropical uh, ever get, uh, you know, to the Atlantic Ocean. Um, well, it couldn't go around Cape Horn because it's too cold. Uh, and I don't think it could go through the Panama Canal, and so the only way it could get there is if somebody dumped it maybe out of an aquarium. Somebody perhaps even wanted to sabotage Atlantic waters. These are obviously the large fins at the side, which basically what you're seeing here, this is how they feed. They crowd in a smaller fish, open their <laughs> fins, and then swallow a little fish, okay? The first reports of lionfish in the Atlantic came actually from the 1980s. A fisherman collected one in his trap off Miami. Then there was a documented release during Hurricane Andrew of an aquarium that was damaged and the fish ended up in the water. Uh, but there probably have been multiple releases over many years uh, leading to the establishment of these fish. The increase started in the late 1990s, and in 2000, we began to see fish up along the east coast into North Carolina and Bermuda. And starting in about 2007, we've seen a very rapid increase throughout the Caribbean. Lionfish females can produce 30,000 eggs per spawning event. They can spawn throughout the year every four days. So they're quite prolific. And they also reach sexual maturity at a very uh, small size and young age. One thing about them that's different, though, is that they have venomous spines that have a venomous secretion at the end and very sharp pointed tips. So some aquarists think it's a good idea at first, but after they've been poked once or twice working in the tank, decide they don't necessarily want to keep them. Lionfish sting is a different kind of sting than a jellyfish sting. A jellyfish sting uh, has pneumatocysts, the small structures that fire onto the skin, so it's more of a surface sting. The lionfish spines are actually like a hypodermic needle and can penetrate quite deep. And venom tissue lies along the length of those spines in grooves. And when that venom is introduced into the wound through a puncture with the spine, it's putting that venom well into the body.
So even though it all started in South Florida, we're just now starting to see larger numbers. And within this year, uh, 2009, um, we've probably had about 40 or 50 reports of lionfish from Fort Lauderdale south into the Florida Keys. But as the year progresses, I'm sure that number will increase dramatically. From what I understand, they're bigger here than any place else they live in their home range. Uh, we found lionfish over 47 centimeters here in the Atlantic. And the largest fish in the native range is known to be about 32 to 35 centimeters. So they're getting larger. It also appears they may be feeding uh, more here than they do in their native range and, and have the potential to cause a greater impact through that. Yeah, there was an article published that said uh, three and a half thousand were imported in six months of 2006 into Tampa alone. That's one city. It was an epic event. Emotions and tensions ran high. And the lionfish was just perched upside down, facing away from me in this little overhang. And I was like really excited. So if you've got a pet and it doesn't belong here, please don't let it go.